Next question is from Lucas Hunt 10. When beginning your workout, do you always have to start your routine with the compound lifts? Can it be beneficial to save them until the middle or end of the workout? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Rule number one, follow the basic rules of resistance training. Rule number two, break them sometimes. Right. Um, yeah. uh, everything works, uh, it, but nothing works forever. That's another one. Um, that's true. So tr- traditionally, for the most part, yeah, you want to do your compound lifts first. They require the most strength, uh, coordination, Mainly because you're trying to avoid energy. fatigue. Yeah, and, and you, want, you want to use your big bang for the buck exercises first when you're the freshest. That being said... Sometimes I do them at the end, uh, especially if I'm trying to feel a muscle. If I'm trying to feel a target muscle, there like mm-hmm. let's say, um, let's say when I squat, I don't feel my glutes very much. It can be beneficial to do isolation glute exercises first and then go squat. Or if my chest uh, is underdeveloped and I don't feel it when I'm doing all my presses, mm-hmm. it might be a good idea to do flies or pec deck before I go do presses. Um, I love sometimes doing the isolation movements first. Because then when I do the compound movements, it forces me to slow down and focus on what I'm doing. Because now at the end of the workout, I'm not squatting 315. I'm probably squatting 185 because I'm already fatigued from the other stuff that I've done with my legs. Now I'm slowing down. I'm squeezing. I'm getting a good pump. I've done this with deadlifts uh, where I almost always do deadlifts first in my back workouts. But there's been ones where I do it at the end. And when I'm doing it at the end, I am going way lighter and I'm squeezing and feeling the muscles more than I would normally. So... Absolutely, there's some benefit to doing that. I, I I think I did this a lot when competing. When 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 my focus was like how muscles looked, and I'm and I'm trying to sculpt the body versus caring about overall strength and overall like muscle gain. Because obviously, nothing is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck than being the freshest to a compound lift, right? Like if 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 you're, you two people day one, today's day one for both of them. And where the goal is over the course of the next six weeks, who can we put on the most amount of muscle in those first six weeks? I'm going to definitely tell this client, like, we're going to start with compound lifts. They're going to benefit the most. But like Sal said, you know, if you if that's been the rule for months and months and months, well, one of the best things that you can do is to break that rule just because your body it's going to be it's going to be a new adaptation. Your body's not used to that. It's not used to then all of a sudden going isolation exercises first and then to more to your point Sal like so let's say uh for me like uh, the very first show I ever did it was a critique on my shoulders uh rear delts happened to be one of the very first things that I began like really focusing on to try and develop well because rear delts became more of a priority than just building my overall shoulders every shoulder workout began with rear delts going forward during that that uh off season for the next for the next show and so I would do like rear delt flies with dumbbells, cables, and then I would do an overhead press. So I'd still do my big compound lift, but I wanted to feel more of my rear delts and I wanted them to get most of my energy so I could really get after them early in the workout. So there's definitely always exceptions to the rule, especially when you're when you're heading towards body sculpting, when you care about trying to sculpt the physique, then the isolation exercises first can actually be very beneficial to that. 